Welcome back. Another episode of Hard Locks NFL Week 10, I believe. We on Week 10, Alex? Hey, Garrett. Huh. Garrett. What? It literally fucking says NFL Week 10 odds, like right fucking there. Uh, that's Chickster down there. <laughs> Every week. Uh, goes over the NFL spreads. We, uh... <laughs> Pick on spreads. He use the better, better. You you get the spiel. Uh, I'm not going to ask you how you're doing because you just reminded me that I'm an entire bitch. So we're just going to get right into the record. Uh, if great. you recall last week, we both had the exact same picks, which means we have the exact same record this week. To be and, fair, I forgot that before before we got on. So there you go. And, I'm a bitch uh, too. We should never do that again because we went seven and seven. Well, I didn't ask you to pick the same ones as you as me, like. I didn't ask you to pick the same ones as me. I picked them first. And I picked some of these games first. To be fair. To be I fair. Did wish, to be fair. To be fair. That's from Leonard King. Very good <laughs> show. Watch that. Um, I did say I wish that your picks did horrible. That is true. And it was mediocre. And you said, well, first you said my pick, you hope my picks do great. And so it just kind of balanced out. That is true. And we I feel like seven if seven. I would have told you, I hope your picks suck, after you told me you hope my picks suck, we would have went, like, fucking four and ten. Actually, no, because two negatives make a positive, and we would have went 16 and 0. And there's not even 16 games playing. Guys, you want to know why I've been friends <laughs> with Alex for so long? Because I can always count on him for reminding me what a big-ass bitch I am. Honestly, every, it, like, every time I start to forget, he goes, I got you, fam. And he reminds me, and I love him for that. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate that. Let's get into the Thursday night game this week. It's uh, it's awful. This game's trash. Uh, Carolina plus three and a half, uh, playing the Bears <clears throat> at home. Uh, Justin Fields, I think, is practicing. I think he's questionable. Uh, it's probably still Tyson Badgen <laughs> playing this week. Bellas. Yeah. This is what you do. You tell your girl, like, look, there's football on tonight, but really, I just want to take you out on a date. I want to I want to treat you nice today. And now, now you got some brownie points doing that. Cause you cause you're telling you're like, oh yeah, there's football on, but you know, I care. Ain't nobody trying to fucking watch this game. Nope. Like I don't even I I can I have every capability to watch this game. Actually, I don't yeah. think well. I'll be. I think I'll be traveling, but I'm not gonna watch it regardless. Like this game is horrible. Hey, like the, your your plane probably has. If you, if you're flying Southwest, you can watch it on their free Wi-Fi. I, 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 who's trying to watch this game? Well, I'm asleep because uh, when I wake up, I land about ten ish, and uh, when I wake up, it's party time. So I'm I'm asleep on the plane, rejuvenate, you know, some energy, uh, re. Exilla Hibberlake, <laughs> clear head ass. I yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> but you know, I'm not watching this game, and you know, you shouldn't either. If you watch football, obviously, uh, you should be, you know, you should just take your girl out on a date, get some brownie points, might get some head, you know. Do not it, only do should you not watch this game, you definitely shouldn't bet on this game. No, this no, game, you should. This, this is horrible to bet on. This, yeah. is a, this is such a shitty game to bet this on. This is expensive. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to take Chicago. I'm taking Carolina. <laughs> so there you All go. All right. Well, I know one thing. We're not going to have the same record this week. Uh, we might. Well, we might, uh, you know, I, what I meant is that we're not going to we have might. like the exact same. Uh, we're not going to have the exact same like picks is what I meant. Ah, uh, that is, that's more you. so what I meant, but thank you. Thank you for keeping me in check and reminding me. Uh, we've got our next game here. This is the other Frankfurt game. Uh, the Frankfurt fans got spoiled last week, sort of on paper. They were going to get spoiled. That game didn't turn out to be very good. Uh, it was Miami, Kansas city last week. This week is Indianapolis and new England. Well, this is how you lose fans in Germany. Yeah, so. this, this this is how you tell German fans, hey, we hear you that you like the product. We just don't give a shit. Yeah. Oh, uh, 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 old begging ass here. Here's some NFL 
Here's the essentially, essentially. here's the crumbs. Here's the crumbs. I know that, and you know, after a you know a headline game like Miami and Kansas City, I feel like you gotta you know double dip in that shit. You you like, have to. You gotta come with up so like something big. Like this would have been the time to have like a a San Francisco Buffalo or something, right? Like two heavy. Hit. I don't I don't think they played. Well, even like, okay. That, so like, this, for example, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna look through these games. And then, and then we'll see which one should have been in Frankfurt. I got you. you go. That's a good You're idea. Kicking. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Indianapolis minus one and a half against New England. I'm Neutral picking... site. You're just picking the better team, and the better team right now is it's Indianapolis. Yeah, it's the Colts. I'm taking the Colts. I hate this next game. Uh, give me two seconds. I actually hate right a in. lot of these games. Isn't that crazy? San Francisco and the Jaguars should have been right now. Right this now, is th- this is the front runner for the other yeah, German. This is game. this is our early favorite. Right this now. is this this should be a, a good game. San Francisco coming off of a bye, minus three on the road against Jacksonville, who I believe is on the longest winning streak in the NFL right now. Uh, Jacksonville? I I think I saw a tweet that they're on the longest win streak. Wow. Yeah, I think they've won five or six in a row. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Jacksonville's three point dogs at home. It, this one's this one's weird. Uh, we should see the debut of Chase Young, even if it is in a limited amount. Uh, recently acquired Chase Young from the Washington Commanders at the trade deadline. I don't know. I'm gonna go 49ers. Uh, until Jacksonville kind of proves something to me, I don't know. 49ers is a very safe bet, I feel like. D- defense always travels. Yes. Defense always travels, and it's it's always safe. To, it's always safe to bet on a, a defense. That's a good point. I'll, be, I'll I'll take San Francisco. However, it's like they they sent you know draft picks for you know Chase Young when they should have just sent draft picks for a quarterback. But you know what do I know? Yes. It's spicy. Yes. It's a, a spicy meatball. Get, get, okay. get the milk. It's spicy in here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask you, I'll ask you after this. Okay. Uh, uh, when this line first opened, <laughs> I just—it's just a funny story. When this line first opened, uh, it was Minneapolis plus four and a half. The line's already moved to Minnesota plus two and a half against the Saints. Uh, Josh Dobbs, the past Josh Dobbs. or not? Uh, as, Our as favorite he's astronaut. Appoint, as he's been recently appointed the past or not? Uh, should be getting a start this week. Uh, he played really well last week against Atlanta. Should have cost Arthur Smith his job, but it won't, and that's fine. It's another story for another day. Uh, I'm hammering Minnesota here. Yeah, I'm picking Minnesota as well. Hammering Minnesota. Uh, how, can you, how can you pick against Josh Dobbs right now? Like, you don't even have to like the guy, but he's one of those guys you just root for. Ryan Fitzpatrick was like the same way. Yep. But there's no way you hate that guy. You're just like – You you can't root against him. You're just like, I fuck with Josh Dobbs. You know what I'm saying? I like, fuck you, with that you're hard-pressed to find any NFL fan out there that's like, you know what? I don't like this Josh fuck Dobbs. Josh fuck Dobbs, fuck right? Josh Dobbs. No one's saying that. He's saying, no, they're saying, fuck NASA. And if you're saying fuck NASA, you're not American. Damn. 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 Shout out to the Germans. Uh... <laughs> Well, because we were, ah, forget it. It's not funny. You have to explain it. Uh, Tampa Bay <laughs> minus Oof. one and a half against Tennessee. Uh, there it is. Mike Rabel <laughs> announced today that Will Levis is the starter uh, going forward. Ryan Tannehill, his Ryan Tannehill is officially listed as the backup when he comes back to be healthy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Tennessee didn't look great last week against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh didn't look great last week because they're Pittsburgh. Uh, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's offense is not bad. Uh, Rashad White's finally starting to get some get some ground this year. Uh, Baker Mayfield's playing pretty decent ball. He's got weapons. Uh, I think I'm taking. I think I'm going to take Tampa Bay here because this is essentially a pick 'em, if we're being honest. Because it's only one. It's only a point and a half. So you're you're. I think you're picking to see who wins outright. I think Tampa Bay wins. Who did Tampa play last week? Oh, they had uh, Houston last week. Oh, that doesn't make me feel better. I'm going to take the Titans, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Titans. I'm going Titans. I just, I'm just uh, reading the week. Let's put it in there. Scroll it down. 
Yeah, let's get it. We've here. got an AFC North matchup, arguably the best division in football right now. Uh, Cleveland's plus six going to Baltimore to play the Ravens, who are one of the best teams in the NFL right now. Uh, I'm, I'm picking the hot team. Baltimore is hot right now. Me too. Baltimore is really, really playing good football right now. It's, it's a bad time for those former fans that, of Baltimore that are former. I, I, I swear to God, Trey is still a, a Ravens fan. You remember when like Trey would just start talking shit about the Ravens all out of nowhere? No one like nothing. He just started talking shit. I'm like, oh, he still cares. Yeah, he cares. He just hates them. But I, no, I think the Baltimore. X factor here is like you never know what you're going to get anymore with Deshaun Watson. You never know. He could he could throw fifty five percent with an interception and one touchdown, or he could play decent like he did last week. It wasn't even stellar. He played he played fine. He could be but, a top ten quarterback, and then he he might he go touch up some field miles, and now oh he's not. Gosh. Now he's not a top ten. We're we're gonna keep it pushing. Uh, <laughs> what? I just uh, just because you got a point, don't mean nothing. I, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, just, Houston plus just six and a half. Uh, CJ Stride last week set the all-time rookie record for passing yards in a game. With that like motherfucker four, good. 475 touchdowns. Good. On the year, 14 touchdowns, one interception. Uh, I saw a statistic in the last couple of days that said CJ Stroud's more has thrown more touchdowns than Kenny Pickett has through their careers and he I saw played like 13 less games. I and... didn't want to be, I didn't want to be toxic, but I saw that as well. I, you know what? I didn't even want Kenny Pickett. I didn't. You didn't. You didn't. I remember vividly being in this house upstairs on draft night, wearing my Steelers Jersey, my TJ Watt Steelers Jersey. <laughs> and Franco Harris said, wow, this is incredible. Kenny Pickett, quarterback Pittsburgh, and I took off my jersey and I fucking threw it, and I was over it. I didn't, I didn't want him, and it, it's showing because he, like, part of it's, you know, Matt Canada. And who is it? Is it Matt I, Canada? I've or gotten Kenny myself, Pickett? I've gotten myself into this rant. Oh, well, who is it? Is it Matt Canada or is it Kenny Pickett? It, it's a bit of both, to be honest. They both suck. I Pickett's not great. So how come we can't say that about Justin Herbert? <laughs> just oh, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, going back on topic here. Uh, so yes, yeah, CJ Stroud is far and away the QB one. Should have been picked first overall. Carolina made a mistake. We all can acknowledge this by this point. You you had it right. So did Trey. Uh, they're plus six and a half playing against Cincinnati, who is one of the best teams in the NFL right now as well. Joe Burrow is playing as well as any quarterback right now. Uh, worth noting, Jamar Chase should be coming into this game a little banged up with a hurt back again. Uh, T. Higgins played really well last week, though. So this might be a big <sighs> game for T. Higgins. Uh, Perhaps. these It's two hot teams right now. I don't, I don't know how anybody can feel super confident either way. Like, this is like surefire, can't-miss game. Because I don't know. I think it'd just be electric. This might be. This might be a. I don't think. I don't. I'm picking the Bengals. I'm not sure if this game will be close, but fuck, it's gonna be electric. Like you're just got. Now, I do want to say, before the draft, you know, it it's called something else now. Same same concepts, different different whatever, different process. But like the Wonderlick. Uh, Oh, like S2 or, or whatever test? Yeah, whatever. The, whatever the quarterback – and C.J. Stroud scored so poorly, and everyone basically said this motherfucker's stupid. He can't play quarterback. He can't make reads. And now look at this motherfucker is balling his ass off. So, And I was all for it. I was actually with it that they were spreading, you know, that he couldn't play quarterback because I was hoping he would drop to seven so we could take Tyree Wilson over C.J. Stroud as well. Because that's yeah. Who, it if both were on the board, if C.J. Stroud and Jalen Carter were both on the board, this is a two-part question. Who does Chickster want in that scenario? Two, who does Chickster think the Raiders go with? Is it C.J. Stroud, Jalen Carter, or a third player? Okay, one would have been close, but I would have took C.J. Stroud. I would have took the quarterback. Two. 
the other player, Tyree Wilson. <laughs> it was Tyree Wilson all along. Vontae Tyree Mack, no Wilson matter no matter what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was Tyree Wilson no matter what. That was that was the guy. That was the absolute right. guy. All right. So yeah, you know, I'm I'm really thrilled about that. So uh I but. think I'm also taking Cincinnati. Uh it's it, this they're they're so hot right now. Cincinnati is playing. just more proven. Yes. They're more proven. This this game I would probably bet the over on because both offenses can push oh, the ball yeah. really fast. Because yeah, the over under is forty eight flat. Like so it's I twenty four each. So I have I have no doubts in my mind that each team's putting over over twenty four. Yeah. But like you said, more experienced leadership. I'm gonna go with Cincinnati. Correct. Correct. Uh, this should be a real humdinger here. Uh, <laughs> Green Bay plus oh, three. Really? What? A uh, humdinger. My bad. H U M D I N G E R humdinger. Look at that. I'm with it. Uh, Green Bay is plus three traveling to Pittsburgh to play the Steelers. Uh, the over under is 38 and a half. Take the under. Uh, this this the final score is going to be 17 13. Uh, and it's going to be 17 to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's covering this game. Yeah, uh, I, I also have Pittsburgh. Until, I, it, until... It, it's not even about that I have confidence that Pittsburgh's going to be able to put up points because you can't anymore. We've established this, but Pittsburgh's defense is going to run rough shot over Green Bay's offense. I mean, according to our, my cousin DJ, who is a Packers fan, it's the defense. Not Jordan Love. It's the defense, and I'm just like, have you one, watched one, Jordan Love play football ever? To be fair, I think he's backed off of it a little bit because I think last week or the week before, he was just like, maybe Jordan Love is the issue. Maybe Jordan Love isn't a future Hall of Famer. Now, did he mean that? I don't know. He may have, he may have not. But He's DeLulu. He might, he might be a little DeLulu. He sounds uh, like Chickster. This game, this game, I don't want to say screams free money. Oh, Kyler Murray's I, back. I think Vegas is being a little too generous with this line right now. Oh, yeah. Kyler Murray is going to be back for this game. For sure. And Kyler I, Murray. The smoke is, and mirrors were almost there, but there, it, it was. It almost was. It almost was. But Kyler yeah. Murray is worth a couple of points by himself. Oh, yeah. And you mean to tell me I'm getting Arizona at home as a home dog against. Atlanta, who refuses to use their high draft picks on offense. Uh, anyone in particular? But well, I mean, we saw it last week. Both Bijan and Kyle Pitts, Arthur Smith, just refuses to use them both. He that likes the expensive sense. decoys. He likes the expensive decoys. It, it, dude, it does. I don't get it. I it don't opens get up it the at offense. All. Oh yeah, it sure opens up the offense. All right. Uh, I'm I'm, uh, I'm taking Arizona here, and I'm taking them by quite a bit. Are you alternate alternate spread here? I would consider buying points and teasing them up to two and a half. I think they win by at least a field goal. I think six Kyler and Brown, a half. I think ooh yeah, just six and okay. a half. Just put it up okay. there. Arizona, but you're teasing it to minus six and a half, and I'm yeah. teasing it to. 2.5. Okay. Yeah, risk it for the biscuit. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna we're gonna keep track of that. I don't I don't hate that to be honest. I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. That's a it's just a touchdown. Uh this game I believe opened up as a pick'em and the line has moved slightly. Detroit is now minus two and a half against the Chargers. Chargers coming off of a somewhat shortened week. They played this past Monday against the Jets. Didn't look great, but they got the job done. Um Detroit is, Detroit is minus two and a half. They're coming off of a bye last week. Right? Yeah, they're coming yep. off of a bye last week. Yep. Uh, Jameer Gibbs had his best day as a pro. Over 150 scrimmage yards and a touchdown. Imagine just playing your 12th overall pick. Imagine playing and implementing your top picks in the offense. It's kind of crazy. Arthur I Smith, will say... Are you listening? <laughs> uh, I, had, I had concerns about the Chargers' rush defense going into last week against Brees Hall, and they they played not bad. They didn't play bad against him. Uh, I am curious to see how they play with Jameer Gibbs coming out of the backfield. But I have to throw this at you. 
Do we believe in Zach Wilson throwing the ball? No. Oh, that's why. I mean, like, yeah, we can talk about the Chargers rush defense, but the entire game plan for the Chargers was, was going to around the rush defense. They were, they were like, hey, we're going to force Zach Wilson to throw the fucking ball. Even if it is to Garrett Wilson, we're going to force that motherfucker to throw the ball and beat us with his arm. And they couldn't do it. And so that's why. That's what, you know, teams were doing against the Raiders. They didn't respect Jimmy Garoppolo at all. They respected Josh Jacobs. They would stack the box and say, hey, Jimmy, throw the fucking ball. And he couldn't. And that's why the Raiders couldn't win. So, you know, same thing here. Uh, Now, Chargers, the Chargers defense as a whole is not good. Pass defense, rush defense, it's not good. So I think actually Detroit's offense is going to overpower them, especially coming off a bye week. Chargers on a short week. I am hammering the Lions on this game. I'm also taking Detroit by quite a bit. And, you know, Justin Herbert is just going to get another pass, but it's okay. Uh, we've got an ugly Not one Not touching here. that one. We've Not got an ugly one here. Uh, this. Oh, my God. I Call me crazy. I think this might be my free money game of the week. Are you taking Dallas? Yeah. 17. Easy. Yeah. I mean, they, they went into the Meadowlands and won 40 to 3 this year. And you mm. mean to tell me that in Dallas, starting Tommy DeVito, Jacob Eason, or Matt Barkley, they're going to stay within 17 points? No shot. I'm te- I'm teasing this game up to like 27 30. I'm, I'm, if you I'm tease not this joking. up to 30 and you hit, uh, that's crazy. That's, we got to get the odds on that one. I can, tell you, that. I can tell you right now. The odds got to be insane on that. I, I, I just can't right believe now. we're having so much Tommy DeVito hate right now. I mean, have you? I'm just kidding. I'm him? just. I was, I, was, I was about to. I was, I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I could be, a, bro. I could be an actor. I don't know why people say I can't. Like I can win an Oscar, and then I would name the Oscar Vendetta, and then you know, because it's for me. But no, the as much as I like. Patrick Graham, the Raiders defensive coordinator, Tommy DeVito looked ass cheeks against the Raiders defense. God forbid he goes against the Cowboys defense. Um, I, 17, 16 and a half is a lot of points, but I think actually Dallas can cover this. Um, I wouldn't bet on this game because I don't like betting NFL spreads that are 17 points, but Garrett's teasing it. He likes it. I'm with it. I'm, I'm going to pick the Cowboys to cover I will probably make this ticket at some point between now and Sunday. Uh, Dallas minus 28 and a half is plus 386. That's not bad. I, I like that quite a bit. This Giants team stinks. They're playing, stinks. They're playing Tommy DeVito. I, they, they, they don't stand a chance. They absolutely do not stand a chance. This is, my, this is one of my free money games of the week. Dallas by a million. Uh, we've got Washington plus six going into Seattle to play the Seahawks. Uh, Washington coming off of a win last week against New England. Seattle lost last week by quite a bit to to Baltimore. Uh, is it is it when do you think people are going to start to understand that Sam Howell is the future of the Commanders? So what I figured out is that wins are a QB stat, except when you're Justin Herbert. But when I the, – the reason why people don't respect Sam Howell is because he doesn't win, and he's not super uber talented like a Justin Herbert, I guess, to where it doesn't fucking matter. So, I mean, the Washington Commanders are actively tanking. They just traded Montez Sweat. They just traded Chase Young. Um, Sam Howell can fucking play. That motherfucker can play. Like, it's, it's, I'm, I was kind of not sold on him. You sold me on him. Kept watching. Like, fuck, he can play. Um, I'm in on the Sam Howell hype. Uh, but it's going to be a few years until they can rebuild the offensive line, get some guys in free agency, until people really kind of respect that. But, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. I hate this game. Um, and it's nothing has to do with the Commanders. It has to do more with Seattle. I don't know what to get. And, and the reason why I don't know what to get out of Seattle is because they have Geno fucking Smith, the guy they gave a fucking 
big contract to for whatever reason. I don't like people were just like, oh no, Geno Smith can play again. I'm like, no, he just hasn't played in a while, and no one knows how to fucking play him. Now that there's some tape on him, they know how to play him. He doesn't. He's not very good again. The Seahawks are just very fucking talented. So, I talked myself into just now, literally 3.4 seconds ago. I'm a pick Seattle because they're very talented, and I think they're more talented than the Commanders. Um, as I figured out, at about an hour ago on the college football playoff, <laughs> like on the college football hard lock, when there's a better team. A more talented team. You just fucking pick them. So I'm just going to pick Seattle and hope that Geno Smith just doesn't fuck it up. Uh, if you don't get Alex's reference, be sure to watch the college football edition of Hard Locks uh, where there I referenced. I've learned through the season that if you're hesitant on a game, you just pick the better team. What a concept. What an absolute concept. Um, yeah. I'm right there with you in the sense that it might be a little time before Sam Howell really steps into a star or even even potentially like a superstar status. Um, I have been on I have been on the Sam Howell hype train since this off season. No, I'm with you. I've heard that. Uh, I, I can attest to it. I I just love I love almost everything about him. I say almost. He is in his second year, first full year kind of getting the starters reps. Uh, he had a bonehead interception last week against New England. It, it happens as young quarterbacks. It, it, it happens. Exactly. It's going to happen. You're going to take those interceptions when Sam Howell is like third and 17 and he picks up a first down with his legs. Yeah. That's the trade off you have to understand. Uh, the commanders should be picking offensive line with every single pick in the draft with the exception of some edge rushers, since they traded both of those away. The offensive line is awful. Sam Howell's I, I on think they pace should just fix the offense first. They should just Sam, fix that. Sam Howell is on pace to be sacked like 90-something times this year. Oh, my God. I, I, I wish I was making that up, but I'm wow. not. That's a, that's a real statistic that you can find wow. out there right now. Oh. He's on pace to be like one of the most top-sacked quarterbacks in the history of the league. Is he getting sacked six times a game? Yes. That that offensive quick maths, friend of a math teacher. I could never do that. That's how bad this offensive line is in San Francisco. It's or San Francisco in Washington. I don't know how I got those two mixed up. San Francisco's down here, or I guess on your guys' screen. San Francisco's down here, and Washington is way no, San no wait. Washington, San Francisco Washington. no San Francisco's down here. Washington is way up here. Yeah, Washington. That, that's geographically correct. That's geographically yeah. correct right here. Yeah. I don't know how I got those inter intertwined there. Um, I'm going to ride the hot hand. I'm going to ride the hot hand. Uh, Seattle didn't look very good. Geno's kind of been a little turnover heavy this year. I think that Washington should be able to do enough to keep it close. I don't think they're going to win outright. I would not bet a ticket on that. I think they can cover six. We would accept a push. We don't love pushes. We would accept the push. I don't think they lose by seven or more. So I'm going to take Washington. Yeah. I'm going to take it Seattle. Uh, we're going to save the Vegas game for last. The there, there's, Raiders. there's a bit to talk about there. Yeah. Uh, our Monday night matchup here somehow did not get flexed out. Uh, neither did the Broncos primetime game next week as well, for whatever reason. Uh, Denver plus seven and a half going against Buffalo, who kind of smell like frauds this year. I think it's time to start having that conversation. Uh, it, are, is it is it almost time to have the conversation about Sean McDermott? Um, Not and, time right now, but are we getting to the point where we need to start having the conversation about Sean McDermott? Yeah, I mean, but it's also hard. It's like the Mike Tomlin thing. If you are consistently good – you're making the playoffs and you lose in the playoffs. Like it's kind of hard to be like, yeah, we need to get rid of this coach. That's entirely fair. But I don't at this time see the Buffalo Bills winning a Super Bowl with Sean McDermott as the head coach. I could be wrong, but at this point in time, I do not see it. So um with that being said, I'm still taking Buffalo. Um I think 
I think the the thing with Buffalo is just like people are getting impatient. You know what I'm saying? I feel like for as talented as this team is and how good you could see their potential being and then them just not doing it can be very frustrating. And that's why everyone's kind of like, well, what the fuck, Buffalo? Like they lose a game and everyone immediately kind of overreacts. Um, but Buffalo's still a good team. And the fact of the matter is even though Denver's playing better, they're still not a good team. So I'm going to still take Buffalo here for only eight points. I say this with a confidence ranking of one on a scale of one to 16, 16 being I'm super confident in this one being, I have no confidence. That's how your traditional confidence pickums go with one point confidence. I'm taking Denver only because Buffalo has not played very good football as of late. Denver hasn't played good football, but they're playing winning football. And what I mean by that is they're limiting the turnovers they're getting some turnovers on defense. The defense is playing better. It, I mean, they they still gave they still gave up seventy this year. Let's not get it twisted. This Vance Joseph defense still gave up seventy this year. That's so crazy. So crazy. They're, in the NFL. they're starting to look okay, and I think that with how with the momentum that Denver has right now, I think they can cover eight points. Are right you now. hesitant on this game? And what did you tell me to do with when you're hesitant on a game? One team is really hot, though. <laughs> hot in the sense of, like, oh. that, I was about to explain. <laughs> hot in the sense of they're playing significantly better football than what they did in weeks prior. And they, I think they've won back-to-back games. Well, fuck it. The bar is this low. In Denver, the bar is that low. Trust me, well, as, as a Colorado local... The bar is that low. Well, I'm saying, yeah, if the bar is this low and then you're just like, oh, yeah, they're playing better, the bar could still be just right here. It's true. It's still low. It's still low. Don't get it twisted. That okay. bar is still okay. inches off the ground. Okay. Uh, we leave the last game for a specific reason. Uh, I want to get Alex's thoughts on how the team looked last week. Uh, they are plus one and a half. They are home dogs this week. Uh, and... We may get to go to this game. Hasn't been decided yet. It's still up in the air. Uh, so, Alex well, and I started GoFundMe for this. Like, start Alex and I GoFundMe. will be in Vegas this weekend for his brother's 21st birthday party. Woo! Uh, celebrating in Vegas. Alex leaves uh, Thursday night. I leave Friday Thursday. morning. Yep. Uh, we'll be there till Monday. Yep. Um, and we've had we've talked about going to this game, and it's still on the table. It's tickets still on the table. You know, tickets are, tickets are expensive, but. We're keeping an eye on it. So I want to get your thoughts on how the team looked last week. Uh, did their performance last week give you any any sort of confidence? Do you believe in this team more than you did eight or nine days ago? And what do you think about going into this game against the Jets? You asked me four fucking questions. So you guys do it one by one. What was the first one? So you don't even remember. How was I supposed to answer all that? You, you were just supposed to pay attention. I, I was uh, all right. Okay, um, we'll go. We'll go one at a time. All right, one at a time. What, what did you think of the performance last week? They played great. Uh, better, a lot better. Uh, really, and as a coach myself, like you want your players to play hard, and the Raiders just weren't doing that. You could kind of see like they were just, hey, I'm getting a paycheck. Um, no, they played fucking hard as hell, especially on the defensive side. Um, you could tell that Antonio Pierce is a players' coach. He got him to play super hard. Um, you know, there, there's still a lot of holes on this team, but playing hard is part of the game. Like that's just, that's part of the problem. If you can get players to play hard, um, you know, you can overcome a lot of like talent deficiency if you can get players to play hard. So they played a lot harder. Um, still not, you know, there, there were still some, some bad and like, let's not, let's not say it's chocolate when it's shit. They played the Giants. And the Giants aren't a very good team. Um, the Raiders, before, with Josh McDaniels, should have won that game. They 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 won that game with Antonio Pierce. They just won by a lot more. Um, the offense was a lot better in the first half than in the second half. The second half, the, I feel like the play calling, the offense kind of got stagnant. But, you know, they were already up 
three or something, so I can see why they let the foot off the gas. Um, I like to kill opponents, but whatever, that's my personal preference. So they played better. Um, what was the next question? Keeping in mind that they did play Daniel Jones slash Tommy, Tommy DeVito, DeVito at quarterback and the Giants, do you have – what is the confidence level for the rest of the season, specifically going into this game against the Jets, based off of how they played last week? Seven. And then lastly, so just what, do you, seven. <laughs> what do you think what do you think about this game this week going against the Jets and their home dogs? If the Raiders play anything like they did last week, facing the Jets off a bye, they should win this game. Um they yeah, they should I feel like they should be favored a little bit, but I do think they should win this game. Um I will say looking at this over under, pick the over. Um I think either way, uh and one thing that is kind of overlooked is Aiden O'Connell was a better quarterback. Like he should have started anyway. So, um, and I think that kind of showed. Do, you know what's crazy is they scored thirty points without Devontae, without really Devontae being a big part of that offense, which is fine. The Giants bracketed him the entire game. They doubled him. That's fine. Good for them. Right there, it opens up everyone else. Hunter Renfro was a little bit more active in the game, which is awesome. Um, but, like, I don't know. Wait, this offense could be really scary. I mean, it tells you that Josh McDaniels was the problem because in the first half, this team scored 24 points on offense. And the offense couldn't score 20 points in the entire game, the entire season. And dating back to last year, they haven't done it for, like, you know, eight to nine games. So, um, no, I, I do think the Raiders should win this game. I do like the over on this just because, uh, I think Brees Hall will be more active in this game. Um, the Raiders defense, you know, they were, they were letting Saquon Barkley just fucking eat. Um, but I do think the Raiders and the Jets combined can score at least 18 points each. And that's, if they're neck and neck, you know, we might see like a 24 16 look, which is still the over. So I kind of actually like the over on this one. Um, but I think, I think the Raiders, Raiders are going to win. Uh, as far as the rest of the season, let's not get crazy. Um, playing the Giants and the Jets doesn't mean the Raiders are a playoff team. They're not Super Bowl contenders, even though I make those jokes. But a win you know. here does get them to 500, though. It does, and really, that there's there's good and bad news. The Raiders playing hard and winning games, even if it's against teams, bad teams, and maybe games they should win, um, is it just hurts their draft position. Really, it hurts their draft position, especially for a team that's not a playoff team, not going to do any damage in the playoffs, not going to make a Super Bowl, um, still needs a quarterback. I feel like at least as far as the top tier of these quarterbacks in this draft, I don't think any O'Connell is as good as those guys. Um, so, you know, they're hurting their draft position. However, uh, if the Raiders, you know, kind of just lay down and died for the rest of the season, I don't think that's any good for any of the players. Not a lot of players are going to be wanting out. So I think it's super important that they play hard and be super fucking competitive the rest of the year, um, maybe keep interim coaches. If Antonio Pierce makes them play competitive and makes them be in a lot of games they shouldn't be in, like uh, we play the Bills. No, we already played the Bills. I know we have some hard games coming up, but we haven't played the Chiefs. We haven't played the Chiefs twice. If they if they beat the Chiefs or stay competitive with the Chiefs, it's going to be hard to uh, – Especially at the rest of the year, the vibes are good. They're they're playing super fucking hard, and they get more the vibes. They get some talent, uh, you know, and draft correctly. No, that's a big ask, but you know, and go get some guys and free agents. Um, keep their stars happy, like Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs. I don't know. Maybe we're looking at a different Raiders team next year, but I think they need to play super hard for the rest of the year. Uh, for what it's worth, the remaining schedule is hosting the Jets. They're at Miami, hosting the Chiefs, a bye week, week 13. 
coming back week 14, hosting the Vikings, hosting the Chargers at Kansas City, at Indianapolis, hosting the Broncos. Miami and Kansas City is going to be two big weeks, especially if they win this game. How they come out against a Miami and a Kansas City and then how they answer back after the after a very late bye in the season and how they finish up the year. Like I said, I'm not sitting here and going to tell you it's chocolate when it's shit. The Raiders are not a playoff team, nor they should make the playoffs. If they make the playoffs, it's because other teams fucking suck. Um, but if everybody is happy, fuck, that's only good news. Like, you can't really have a team if your team morale is shitty as fuck, so – uh, yeah, we're going. We're going to the Raiders. Uh, start to go fund me so I can go to the game. Um, I guess everyone else can go too, but I just really want to go to the game. Um, and it's gonna hurt my bank account if I go. But you know, I I have, I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to be there Sunday night. I just, yeah, I, I, I got like it. it's, it's just a gut feeling. I know we ain't got tickets, and I know that we haven't really <laughs> even really discussed it with like the rest of the group. But I got a feeling. We're going to be tailgating in the morning, and we're going to be there that night. Maybe not everyone goes. Maybe it's just like three of us that go. They're just like, yeah, fuck it. I I just go, you know? (laughs) Are you buying a ticket by yourself? (laughs) (laughs) Listen, listen, okay. Could you imagine? Seeing the Raiders in the Death Star, I mean, come on. That's that's what I'm saying. I I got a suspicion that we're going, but we'll – We'll stay tuned to our social medias as well at Chickster on Twitter at Notorious underscore. I actually Media. just bought tickets, so no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, going over our picks for the week, uh, we agreed on nine picks total this week. Uh, I have Chicago. Uh, Alex has Carolina. I've got I'll Indianapolis. Think. Alex also has Indianapolis. I didn't pick that one, so we agreed on ten this week. Okay. Uh, we're both taking San Francisco. We're both taking Minnesota over New Orleans. Ugly. Uh, I've Every got that is really so. ugly. I've got Tampa. Alex has Tennessee. We're ugly. both taking Baltimore. We're both taking Cincinnati over the red hot Houston Texans. Uh, we've got Pittsburgh minus three, and what can only be described as an absolute snooze fest. Uh, Vegas is giving <laughs> giving away money with this game because Kyler Murray is coming back. So smoke and mirrors stop now. Uh, Detroit minus two and a half over the Chargers. My free money game of the week is Dallas minus 16 and a half against the Giants. I I might tease it up to 28 and a half, which is like plus what I said, like 380 something. Mm-hmm. I would consider that. I might actually do that. Just take, uh, just take Giants money lines plus 870. Uh, I will get right on that. I will definitely <laughs> get right on that. Could you fucking imagine <laughs> if the Giants won that game? Mike McCarthy would have to resign. Not He'd even have to. And, and you'd have to bench Dak. Oh my God! Bench Dak, fire McCarthy. The Cowboys fans would be actually. I have a friend that's going to that game too, so it'd be kind of funny. If that'd, be, that'd be really bad. That would be hilarious. Uh, I've got Washington plus six. Alex has Seattle. We're both hammering Vegas. Free money. Fuck it. We're going free money Vegas. Free money for Vegas, uh, and I'm taking Denver. Barely. I'm hesitant to do it, but I'm taking Denver. Alex is taking Buffalo. Yeah. Uh, with again the free money games this week, I've got Dallas minus sixteen and a half as my free money. Uh, Alex has Vegas plus one and a half as his free money game of the week. We love it. Vibes are good. So if you combine those two, we are looking at plus two eighty one. Not bad. Not, Not too bad. shabby. I'm sure. When we get to Vegas, we are going to go to a sports book and put money on Vegas to win this game, and we'll sweat it together, hopefully at Allegiant Stadium. <laughs> hopefully. All right. Joining me Break every single week down there is Chickster. <laughs> for Chickster, my name is Garrett Burroughs. Thanks for watching another video. If you haven't subscribed to the Nevada Sports Media YouTube channel already, press the subscribe button, share this with a friend, cousin, aunt, or uncle, or your dog, and be sure to ring the bell so you never miss any more of the uploads coming out of our YouTube channel. We're going to see you next time.